So Cyril has done some research on the C-Star data that they've received, and they've put together a script specifically for that data that comes off of the C-Star. During their testing, they've discovered that the C-Star isn't always the greatest at tracking, meaning some of your images may have nice round stars while others may be trailing a little bit. So this script will only stack and process the images that have the roundest stars. Everything else will be excluded. So I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive to delete data, but really that's what you need to do in order to get the best end result for your image. So that's what the script does. Although if you see this script in the console is excluding too many images and you want to include those, you can change a setting within the script to tell it to kind of relax its checks. And I'll go over that at the end of this video and how you can do that. A couple more things I wanted to talk about. First of all, I myself do not have a C star. So I've received data from Luta Stefan. I hope I'm saying your name right. He sent me data of the Orion Nebula that he shot with his C star. So thanks Luta for that. And one last thing before we get started, I just want to say this video is intended for the user that are new to Cyril. So this is really just a beginner's tutorial. Once you guys go through this and you're comfortable with the processes that I'm showing you, go back and browse through my channel for Cyril. I have videos on just about every other tool that they offer and each of those tools can help you even make your image look better as, as an end result. So again, get used to what I'm showing you today and then check out some of the other tools and try applying them to your C-Star image. I think you'd be pretty happy with the end results. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, we're going to start first with creating our folder structure for the new serial script to use and it needs to be built in a specific way otherwise the script will fail for you so the first thing we're going to do is create our working directory i'm going to create mine on the d drive i have a folder called sessions and under sessions i have a folder called edge hd which is my eight inch sct and i have another one called redcat 51 which is for my redcat so following suit i'm going to create one for the c star and i'm just going to name it c star now, you can put this directory anywhere in your hard drive that you want. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You just need to make sure you're keeping track of ultimately what is going to be your working directory. So C star, and then I'm going to double click it to open it. And I'm going to create another one called M42 because the data that I was given is M42, the Orion Nebula. This is going to be my working directory. So if I double click on M42 and I click in my title bar up here, you'll see D underscore sessions backslash C star backslash M42. That is my working directory. That's the important one to remember. If you don't set Cyril to use this working directory, the script will fail on. So one more folder within that working directory, we're going to create another one called lights. And this one has to be named lights, plural, just as you see it here, name it anything else. And again, the script is going to fail. So now that we have the lights created, we're going to open that up and we'll open up another version of file explorer and i'm going to come over and grab my c star data these are all the m42 files that were given to me Control a right click and copy and i'm going to right click and paste them all into my lights directory now before you go any further pay attention to your type column make sure your type column for each and every one of these images says fit file just like you see on the screen if you see anything else, JPEG, text, whatever, it, it happens sometimes. If there's any other files besides your fit file in here, delete them because again, the script will fail. The script is looking for fit files, nothing else. So now we have our folder structure set with our lights in the proper directory. And again, M42 is going to be our working directory. So before we go into Cyril, let's go and grab the new C star script from Cyril's website. So I'll leave this link in the bottom. This video is based off of this tutorial that they posted last week. But if you come down here under item number one, download the script to pre process your image, click on the link, it'll prompt you where you want to download it. I'm just going to put it in my downloads directory for now. And if we go back over to file explorer and into downloads, there's the script right there. Now, the script needs to be moved someplace that Cyril knows where to look for it. What I do, and again, you can create whatever directory you want. You can put it anywhere you want on your hard drive. I keep mine in C astrophotography. I have a folder called Cyril scripts. I have a folder for my scripts, and then I have a folder for new scripts from Cyril. So open that one up. These are the other three that they have available on their website. So I am going to go over to my downloads directory and I am going to copy the new C star script and put it into my scripts directory. The next thing you want to do, whichever folder you created to store this in, what's easiest for me is to come up here and click on the title bar. It gives you the actual path and just right click 
and copy. And that'll be ready to paste into Cyril. So that's our next step. We'll run Cyril here and configure it for our new script directory. So to do so, come over here to your hamburger menu and then preferences. And then on the left-hand side, hit scripts. We're gonna come right below these first two lines and we're going to paste what we just copied from File Explorer. Now it will look in that path for any scripts to use within the scripts menu up here. Once you get that in place, just click this button down here to rescan the folder, click apply. Now, if we come up to scripts, you can see we have C star pre-processing ready to run for us. So we're ready to do this. So the first thing, and getting back to our working directory that's our first step we have to set our working directory and it has to be correct so come over to your blue house button and you're going to browse to your working directory in our case it was under c star and then m42 don't click on the lights m42 is what we want and then click open look up top right in the middle here and verify that your working directory is set properly if this says backslash lights you're in the wrong working directory you need to be on the directory that contains the lights folder now just to show you if i come up to my house button again and if i selected lights and again up top it shows the current working directory which is now lights which is wrong the script will fail so if i come over to scripts and hit C star pre-processing, it'll start to run and then right away it'll fail. And it says right here, lights, no such file or directory because it's looking for a lights folder in the lights folder that you're in. So if you do this inadvertently, you can either come back up to your house button and then just click on the folder right before lights and then hit open. Or what you can do is come down to the command line and type CD for change directory space dot dot. And when you hit enter, it goes back up one directory. So now if we look at our set working directory up top, we can see we're correct, M42. So that's the most important thing. Like I said, a, a lot of newcomers to Serial get tripped up on that. So once you have that set and your script loaded, we're ready to run the script. So simply come up to scripts and then C star pre-processing. You can watch it over on the console here. And once it's done, depending how many files you have, it'll take a few minutes. This one's stacked in about 17 seconds. Let's just scroll back up in the console so you guys understand some of what's happening here because you will see some red text fly by, which generally indicates an error. But in this case, it is not an error that you need to worry about. So when you, if you see this Bayer pattern found in, in header, GRBG is different from the Bayer pattern in the settings, or GGB, overriding settings. That's fine. This information, this GRBG, which is green, red, blue, green, is actually embedded in each of the images. There's a there's what's called a header in each of your images that contains different pieces of information. This is one of those pieces of information. Cyril is currently set for RGGB, which is red, green, green, blue. And it's just the way it builds the color image. It's, it's the Bayer matrix of the sensor. So it's just overriding it, saying, hey, that's not right. I'm using this instead. So you don't need to worry about those. But like I said, when it's done, you'll see total execution time at the bottom here and now we're ready to jump into the pre-processing part of it so once it completes if you come over to your open button you will see a new file in your working directory named as such so this one is named m42 which is the object name the orion nebula and it's showing us that we have 76 10 second exposures the 19 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the sensor and then the dates. And the one thing I wanted to mention about the M42 piece of this is like I said, it pulls it from the header of the image. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I come over and I open up any of these images into a program called Fitz Liberator and I hit my Fitz header tab, all this data is within the image. It's in the header of the image. So the script is looking for certain items in here to name the file once it's done. One of those items is right here, object M42. I did see a set of data where this was actually blank. So what happened was when it created the file for us, instead of it saying, for example, M42, it just said object. If you see that, don't worry about it. It doesn't have any effect on the outcome of your stack or your pre-processing or anything. It's just a naming convention that it, it couldn't correctly name because the data did not exist. So not a big deal. Don't worry about it. As long as you have your stack here like we do, you're ready to go. So again, just to back up to where we started, we're going to hit the open button. In our working directory, we're going to find our .fit file. Double click it to open it up. And then down on the bottom where it says linear, 
we're going to click this and take it into auto stretch. So just going to go through some quick steps. Like I said, this is a, a beginner's tutorial. It's meant for somebody who has a C star that has not used serial before. So uh, some of the stuff may be boring to you guys. If so, you know, go ahead, skip on through, you know how to install the script and run through everything, but we're going to do some quick processing to get you to a final image right now. Again, we are in linear. If I go back to linear, this is what the actual image looks like. If I was to save this, even if I was to go to auto stretch, if I was to save this image right here, when you, as a JPEG, for example, when I open it up, it would look like this. The image is linear. It has not been stretched. It has not been processed at all. So we're going into auto stretch just so we can see what we're doing. The first thing we want to do is crop the image. Now with the C star being an alt as mount, sometimes you'll have some really heavy field rotation, meaning you'll see the edges of each frame as the object was being tracked throughout the night. In this case, we don't see too much of that, but we do see all of this static looking stuff on the side, right? That's in part from the rotation as well as from when it's stacking and it's lining up all the stars. So we want to clean that up before we move forward. So with my left mouse button, I am simply just going to start up in the corner here and I'm going to draw, I'm holding the left mouse button down, just dragging a square around there, making sure to exclude any of the stuff on the outside that we were just looking at that we don't want and actually this should probably come in just a little bit more like that so we're, we're cropping right now so i'm going to crop what's in this rectangle just by right clicking and hitting crop so now we got a nice clean edge around the image the next thing that we want to do is a background extraction so we're going to come up to image processing background extraction and i won't go too deep into this um, i do have a video that goes through these settings in a little bit more detail if you're interested i'll leave it linked up top here i'm going to change my samples per line down to five and then just click generate now each of these red boxes are sample points right they're samples of the image but we don't want to sample stars especially bright stars or any part of our nebula so we want to remove samples like this one up here and we do that just by right mouse button clicking on the samples that we do not want so everything that's on the nebula we're going to remove and then something like this that's on a relatively bright star it's not too bad but it can cause issues if you leave it there so i'm going to remove it and then left mouse button click and put one over here away from those stars so you can't drag these and move them around but you can delete them with the right mouse button and replace them again with the left. So again, we've got some up here that are sitting on the nebula that we want to get rid of. Everything else we're going to leave at default and we're going to click on compute background. Once that's finished, click your apply button. Now we're going to do some color correction on this. So we're going to come up to image processing, color calibration, and photometric color calibration. Again, all this data, the right ascension and declination, these are the coordinates of the object, your focal length and pixel size, all this information is stored in that header of the fit file that I showed you previously. So there's nothing you need to do here. This information is already populated for you. If it's not for some reason, you can come up in here and you can type, for example, M42 and then click find and it'll show it to you right here. And then that would populate your coordinates for you. In our case, we didn't need to do that because like I said, everything was in the header file and we're ready to go. So all you need to do at this point is click OK, and your image is now color corrected. And kind of do a back and forth here. So this is after color correction, and if I use my undo button, you can see what it looks like here before the color correction, and then we'll hit the redo button, and you can see how much more it just made the image pop for you. Next step that you want to go through is, a, is to remove some of the green noise. Sometimes there's a little bit of a green tint, even if you don't notice it, you'll and you'll notice it when it's removed. Depends on the data but I always run it just as a safeguard. So we're gonna come up to image processing and then remove green noise. All I need to do is click apply and then close. And again, if I undo, there is a difference in this one. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video. I can see the green was removed from the image. So now we've cropped, we've done a background extraction, we've done color correction, and we removed our green noise. So now we need to stretch. Cause again, if I was to save this right now, my image is gonna look like it does when we're in the linear state, which is where we're gonna go back to right now. This is the point where you're gonna stretch. What you end up with after this step is what your final image is going to look like. Once again, this is a beginner's tutorial, and so I'm gonna show you how to do it the quick and easy way. So we'll come up to image processing, histogram transformation, and simply click on this little cogwheel over on the right side, apply auto stretch algorithm to image. Our image is now stretched. This graph that you see right here is your histogram. So if we use the plus button, so we can zoom in to this edge and we can grab this middle slider. So there's three sliders. We got one on the left for the blacks, 
this one that I just moved over is for the midtones. And then there's one all the way over here on the right for all your, your whites, your bright parts of the image. This one, you'll never move. You just always leave it to the right. You're going to mess with mainly in this process, just with the midtones. Just watch your image as you're sliding it back and forth. If it, things are getting too tight, you can zoom in a little bit more with the plus button up top here. And like I said, just watch the image as you're doing this. And at some point, this just becomes personal taste, right? So I think that looks good. And I'm going to hit apply. Close. And now our linear image has been stretched. And if I was to save this, that's what the image is going to look like. If you want better control over your stretching, and this is what I was mentioning before when I said I'm showing you the easy way. If we come up to image processing, instead of using the histogram transformation, you can use the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformations. A lot more controls in here. It'll let, you, it'll let you get a lot more granular, and you probably will get a better final image, even though this one looks really good as it is, if you learn how to use this tool. I have a video on it. I'll leave a, a link up in the top right corner here if you're interested. But start with the beginner stuff if this is your first time using Cyril and then come back and reprocess the same data with this once you've watched the video and you feel comfortable with that. At this point, we're still in a fit file. This is the name of our file, right? That's the one we opened and we started with. You could take this into Photoshop. You could take it into GIMP and do some final post processing if you want. That's not what this video is about. So I'm not going to go through those steps. Just letting you know it is an option. I'm going to show you right now though how you would export this out to different format so you can either directly save it to social media or take it into something like Photoshop. So we're going to come over here and we're going to hit our little save the current image button and under supported image files, you don't have to change this. You can type it once you know what all the file extensions are. But if you click on this, you can see I can save it as a JPEG, a TIFF. If I was going to take it into Photoshop, I would save it as a TIFF first. That way there's not that much compression going on. But if I just wanted to post this up on social media right now, I would just set that the JPEG, you can see it's JPEG. You can leave that default name or you could just call it whatever you want. We can say Orion, click on save, quality is 100, click on save. And now if I come back to my working directory, sessions, C star, M42, there's the JPEG. So I could just right click and we'll open this up like in photos right now. So that's my final image that I could take and post up on social media. So one last thing I wanted to cover was the ability to change one of the settings within the script itself. So if you notice that it is dropping a lot of your images, because like I said in the intro, it's looking for the images with the roundest stars. But if it's dropping too many of them and you want it to go ahead and include more, you can try and tweak the setting within the script to try to get it to include the images where it feels the stars aren't round enough. So you can open this up just using the notepad program that comes with Windows. I'm using Notepad++, so this will look a little bit different. And you can see they included a note right here within the script. If you find that there are too many images of discarded before stacking, that you can increase the value after the setting here. So line 39 is right here. This is what they're talking about. So you can play with this 2.5, leave the K in place. But I would go maybe 3 and then 3.5. Just play with the number, go up a little bit at a time, rerun the script, see if you get better results, see if it includes more of the discarded images from the first, from the previous run. But each time you do this, obviously when you make a change here, make sure you save the script. And before you run the script after your change, it is a good idea, if we come back into our working directory, to delete your process directory, as well as the stack that it created for you. Sometimes if you leave the process directory behind, things get mixed up and you get you, you could get erroneous results from it. So just make sure you clear these two items before each run after you've made a change to the script. So there you go. Cyril's brand new script for C-Star users. Hope you guys found it useful. I hope you give it a try and see how much better you can make your images look out of that unit. I want to take a minute to thank all of my members, both here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate everybody's time that watches the video, subscribes, likes, and shares. I'll see you on the next video in clear skies.